So prior to Diablo 4's release, there's been tons of theory crafting. Everybody's been sitting in Twitch directories and they've been theory crafting and going through the spreadsheets and the numbers and what's good and what's bad and what you should play and how you should play. I felt like that's a waste of time. And the reason is the game's not out. There are so many things that could happen between when you were theory crafting and when the game came out. Just like if you were theory crafting prior to a new season and you knew that there was going to be a giant balance patch. You would never do it. It's a waste of fucking time. But people still did it and people tuned in and people watched and people watched the YouTube videos and people consumed the content and people theory crafted themselves. Well, it pretty much all blew up or all almost blew up. And I kind of want to talk about sort of what happened, why it happened, and why it was such a fucking waste of time. How about this? The first video we're going to watch is Rax's video. Hi everyone, it's Rax. Usually I don't make videos like this, but I think there is one piece of information that's extremely significant that I would like to broadcast to the internet. And Joe Pipora, I'm a big fan of this guy over at Blizzard, he had a tweet earlier that was very interesting. He said, uh, he's talking about there's a date, there's going to be a patch on the first day of Diablo 4, right? So he said, it's going to represent the 1.0 build of Diablo 4 up from 0.9 that we had in place in the server slam. You will see balance changes and bug fixes, emphasis on the balance changes. So Max Roll just launched this. So before he goes into all this, this was the thing that myself and, and several other people were fearing was that everybody was playing versions of the game that were behind and um that any sort of information you made on that would not be any good and it was just literally a waste of time brand new site we've been theory crafting from the server slam and the beta and some people had a review period to look a little bit further i only got to level 59 so i didn't get to see jack shit because i just didn't have time um but with the balance changes, anything is possible, right? Anything that we theory crafted could be thrown out the window. What was the best build could be thrown away and replaced by some other build, right? Exactly. That's why you don't do it. Later on, it was revealed that that's not true. But it for a minute, all of these guys on Max Roll and all these other websites thought that all of their hard work was scrapped. Um, and the only reason that they would have thought that it wasn't was because they were told ahead of time that they were playing a, you know what I mean, an accurate build of the game. But this is one of the reasons why theory crafting before something is released is a bad idea. They spoke an error and needs to correct the record. The server slam build was not 0.9. It was actually a version of our day one build. There will be very few changes between this build and that one that players are playing on launch deeply sorry for the confusion so it's just bug fixes and later on they're going to make balance changes that is significant that's a huge piece of news it's i mean it's a huge piece of news because it wasn't news until it became news do you know what i mean like it was only a huge piece of news because there was a huge piece of misinformation that was leaked first but we were always so unsure of these day one patches what data have they been gathering what internal testing have they been doing that they're going to hit us with that's going to invalidate everything that we've been researching. So the main takeaway there uh, wasn't a lot of this stuff. And we did talk about a few things in here that I didn't really want to talk about, but we decided to doc one more day. How you doing, doc? Thank you very much um, for the resub. Thank you for the two months or thank you for the four months. Thank you for the two months streak. Thank you for the support friend. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the channel. I do appreciate that. But theory crafting the game before any major update is a problem. And the reason is there's a good chance that all that information is going to go by the wayside. It almost happened for these guys with the day one patch. And then as you'll see when we watch some of the stuff from Woodjo, um, people were theory crafting numbers based on information that they didn't even fully understand. And more was found out during the beta. So let's go to that. Um, or more was found during the, the early testing phase for these guys. I'm doing well, Doc. How are you? You having a good day? Uh, so the bucket theory. The bucket theory is something that I guess was brought over from POE. And it talks about bucketing damage and using it multiplicatively to sort of make your damage numbers go big. Um, instead of like it being additive and sort of where you should focus. Um, getting extra damage, right? And then there's another there's another couple things about how like damage is damage damage within a single bucket is additive, right? So 
If you have a critical strike chance of 50% on one piece of gear, and then the next piece of gear you get has 50% crit chance, that doesn't necessarily make you have 100% crit chance. What that does is that adds 50% to the remaining 50%. So long story short, if you have one piece of gear and it's 50% crit chance, you get 50% crit chance. If you have two pieces of gear, both of them add 50% crit chance, you have 75% crit chance because you had your initial 50 and then you got 50% on what was left. Um, so there was a lot of talk about these buckets and how to like maximize the buckets and what you should be doing. It's like, dude, yeah, it, it's like a lot of other games, right? Um, so, uh, so there was conversation about these buckets and what was in its own bucket and how many different buckets there were and Diablo 4 looks like it has like five or six buckets and seven buckets and you can do all this stuff. And everybody was like theory crafting and working on numbers and trying to figure out everything. Well, it turns out there are a lot less buckets than people had originally theory crafted. And this is sort of one of those things that goes back to what we were talking about before, which is why theory crafting the game before it came out was kind of a waste of time because you were only working with a limited scope of data and then you were using that data and extrapolating it out and making decisions based on not all of the information. And Woodjo is gonna talk about it here a little bit and he's gonna kind of explain some things. Um, but the important part here is why, why not waiting was a waste of fucking time. Hi everyone. So recently I was able to play early access of the full Diablo 4 game and I know this is a video that a lot of you guys have been waiting for. I know a lot of you guys were theory crafting their builds and there was like this damage bucket theory going around. We got something for you to do, right, Iza? This is this uh, sheet here that people have been using to make their decisions. And when this was first released here by Snow Raven, uh, it looked a little bit different actually and there were a lot more damage categories and people started making videos about this and I kept getting 20,000. Right, and, and what he's saying was there were more damage categories. Thousand questions every single night about it. So let's talk about it. So with the early access, we actually had the opportunity to basically test everything that we wanted because we actually had access to higher level items. We had access to all of these different like, you know, damage mechanics. And we also just learned more about the game that made the testing easier. Right. So people, for example, assumed that all the damage versus is one category of a combined multiplier and then damage while healthy or damage while fortified would be a combined multiplier. And then you have like damage with. And it's what he was saying there um, to, to sort of like clarify this is the original spreadsheet people were using was pretty much like this was one bucket. So this was one additional bucket. And then the damage while was another bucket. So this was another bucket. And then the damage with was another bucket. So people thought, people were doing a lot of their theory crafting, assuming that these were three additional multipliers. And that's why theory crafting prior to having all of the information is a waste of time because people were making builds going, well, let's get our critical strike to 50%. Uh, with one item and then instead of getting it to 75% with a second item it's better to get 30% damage versus a CC'd character right uh, it's better to get 30% extra damage here because this number's bigger right and then they were adding damage with healthy and trying to get like 15% here because that's better than adding more crit. And they were going through with all these really weird builds. So people were going through with all these crazy ass builds, like trying to figure out how to get one of this and one of this and one of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And it didn't matter. But people spent so much time doing that in theory crafting. And that's why theory crafting prior to the game coming out or prior to any major patch or update is a waste of time. So previously there were a lot more multiplier categories, which would have led to massively increased damage numbers. In yeah, so it, it, to look at this list right here, what they're saying is you have your base damage and then your intelligence is a multiplier on that. So if your base damage is 10 and then you have an intelligence multiplier of 10, that's gonna give you 100. And then if your attack speed is like a 1.1, 1 .1, 
that's going to give you like a hundred and or 110 or like if yeah if your attack speed is 1.1 you get like a 110 and then your crit chance that's going to multiply onto your what your base damage is so if it's like 50 percent crit damage you're going to get 50 percent and then anything down here is additional so damage versus cc this is just going to be a plus not a multiple in the previous tests people were doing they multiplied this number these numbers and these numbers and it gave false positives on builds this means you have only a few so-called damage buckets most importantly there's going to be the main stats for each class so every class has a certain stat that gives them percent damage and that is actually a multiplier this is also confirmed in our testing we have attack speed here which yeah i guess technically gives you a multiplier if you forget about resource management and cooldowns then there's crit and it seems like yeah all values of crit and crit damage just add up together from different sources so it seems like this is accurate as well then we have the vulnerable damage we also confirmed that this is in fact a multiplier and that is nothing that scales with it so vul vulnerable damage is going to be something that you're going to want to proc all the time you're going to want to do that because it is it is still multiplicative compared to everything else so it's one of the other multipliers you have and it is something that it for most classes looks like it's going to be fairly easy to proc or keep proc so you're definitely going to like vulnerable is going to be huge for a lot of a lot of builds so rip build diversity because vulnerable damage is going to be one multiplier that you can't ignore and that was that was really it so i didn't want to go too much and uh, and that's why we kind of put like two of these videos together um is because the two videos together sort of showed the problem and the reason i didn't do a lot of theory crafting looking sort uh seeing how it feels when it's live i think it's going to be good i think understanding the damage sort of like buckets and what's multiplicative and addit and, and uh additive is important but i think that this showcased mainly why i personally didn't do any real theory crafting um prior to the game's launch and why i thought that theory crafting in general was a waste of time um, I understand that some of these guys who got like the most recent build here in the last week or two, their theory crafting is going to be good because they actually seems like they have a good handle on everything that was in the game. But for everybody else, it was just sort of like speculative, speculatively making theories. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of time for their community and their viewers to watch it. And ultimately it's going to lead in a lot of misconceptions. So I think that theory crafting prior to a game's launch is always a waste of time. And theory crafting when you know a large patch is coming. So like theory crafting season one builds, if we know there's going to be a season one balance patch, is a complete waste of time. And anybody that's doing it is only doing it for views and isn't realistically putting good information out there unless they already know what's going to be balanced. And that's not going to happen. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Did you theory craft? Do you see it as a waste of time? Do you still see value in it? Um, am I just out on a limb here by myself, just imagining that it was a waste of time? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're enjoying our content, we will be having tons of uploads of Diablo 4 content in the future. So you can always uh, check out the channel and catch those in the future. And as always, have a great day.